guys. I'm starting a new ASMR series. Sit back, relax, listen to the sounds of the paintbrush. <laughs> well, not really. But how awesome would that be if I if I did do something like that, right? So, uh, it's been a while. Um, when I run out of things to say, I'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, first to the important stuff, this is, uh, I'm doing a little mixing. I'm trying to figure out what kind of skin color I'm gonna use. Initially, I started out just sort of matching my own skin color, or trying to. I don't know if I got that close. And I was going to use that to uh, paint the tentacles on uh, this model. This is a different model than the model that I started with this series. But there's a lot of ways to paint skin. There's a lot of ways to... Um, yeah, there's just a ton of ways to paint skin. So this isn't exactly the way, but this is just another way. This is the way I've been doing it lately. The colors are yellow oxide, dioxazine, purple, burnt sienna, and titanium white. So the, the purple is a really bluish, kind of blue tinted purple. It's supposedly a very strong tinting. Uh, there's the burnt sienna, um, which is obviously a great color. Uh, yellow oxide is kind of like maybe like a yellow, like not, not as green as like a, a lighter, you know, like a Hansa yellow, a uh, cadmium yellow. I guess there can be warm cadmium yellows. Anyways, I mean, it's like, you see, it's a bit of a, a little, little desaturated as far as yellow goes. So, um, there's going to be some places where I'm just off camera and the camera's jiggling a lot. And that's because I'm mixing. So, that might get cut out. Uh, probably would behoove me to mix more paint at once, but uh, sand from another sack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up all of the uh, skin as I go. And I'm going to do a very heavy base coat. And one of the, one of the things about the, the paint that I'm using is actually Liquitex acrylic gouache, which, you know, gouache is kind of like a, I think it's in the same family as watercolors. Um, animators used to use gouache because it was very opaque, so they would paint on their, you know, films uh, that they would paint their, you know, the film cells they would use for animation. More information than is necessary. Anyhow, it's, it's a, I, I think it's not as popular as it used to be, at least that's what I uh, hear on the videos, but I was watching a video and these two people were talking about it and I was kind of, you know, I have to admit like I'm a bit of a, uh, a bit of a Neanderthal when it comes to paint. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not quite at the level where I can say a lot about the properties of a paint other than it covers well it's the color that I want but when it comes to things like pigment size pigment density that kind of stuff like I still like honestly I don't know how a person can can figure that stuff out and I was watching this video and you know the guy was kind of introducing this product he was selling it and he looks at the woman standing next to him and he's like this is heavily pigmented it's highly dense and they kind of look at each other knowingly and I was like Huh. Okay. So those kinds of things like, you know, I mean, I haven't painted with uh, craft paint in a while, so maybe I would notice a difference now, you know? So, I don't know. I could, I could very easily not know what I'm talking about. So it looks like I'm doing some more mixing. And I'm using a uh, number two uh, brush. Um, a lot of these newer kind of adaptations to my uh, process um, are not, you know, I wouldn't say they're permanent. I'm kind of, I've been uh, studying 
Sergio Calvo's Patreon. Uh, he is a four-time Crystal Brush uh, winner. I don't know if he's won them consecutively or uh, if it's been over, you know, he's like four out of six or, you know, four out of the last six or four out of the last four. Anyways, he's amazing. You can see his stuff on Instagram or whatever. And um, he started a Patreon. And, uh, you know, this isn't an ad for him, but I've been learning a lot. And he puts out, a, a, as far as I can tell, about a video a week, which if you look at other Patreons... Uh, they maybe don't have that same kind of schedule. The filming quality is, is definitely good enough that you can see what he's doing. Um, there isn't really any problems, I would say, with that. Uh, there's, you know, he, he doesn't really, I mean, the, he has graphics and video editing and stuff, but he mostly just fills the, uh, he fills the time with lots of, uh, kind of his, his advice and his knowledge. And it's really good. Like you're, you're like, I mean, when you watch this guy paint and I think about how I paint, like, I feel like I'm coloring, you know, like I'm, I'm like a kid and I'm just coloring. Like he's an artist. Like he's actually, you watch him paint and he's creating stuff on the surface. So anyways, uh, I recommend it, you know, um, to get in at the level I'm at, uh, I think it's 12 bucks, but anyways, give it a look. Um, so anyway, how that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm gonna he puts down base coats. I'm I'm base coating. I think I actually I don't go all the way as far as that goes. But like one of his things that he talks about is like just lay down heavy base coats on everything. It's like save yourself some time. And I'm like, huh, that's that's a really good idea. And um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. One of the things about the, uh, the Liquitex is that they can get a little soupy. They dry kind of slow. So, you know, I, I wouldn't go out, I wouldn't go say go out and buy it. Like if you're happy with whatever you have or whatever, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm a crazy person. I see a new shiny object and I'm like, I want to try that out. And also, you know, for years I've been toying with the idea of uh, trying out Joe Sonia and as I look more into it you know scouring the internet Joe Sonia's are acrylic gouaches and uh, so to get back to that subject gouache is has a gum Arabic medium so if you put gouache on a page or a animation cell and then later on you know you put water on it or you put a different color on top of it the binder the gum arabic will reactivate and it'll kind of melt into one another so this sort of does that but once it dries it's like acrylic it dries to a, a film like or not a film but like a oh here i um i noticed there was a imperfection on top of that tentacle so i was like well should i leave it out or no i'll just leave it in i mean this is the ugly truth this guy somehow he escaped my uh somewhat uh, casual approach to cleaning off mold lines and there's still some mold lights on this guy, but there was like this giant nub on top of that tentacle. So I was like, well, I should probably do something about that because uh, that'd be bad. So anyhow, uh, as I was saying, the acrylic gouaches, they, they have the properties of both paints. And then when they dry, they dry to a water uh, proof uh, layer. So um, it's got some other interesting things about it. If you're if you're sort of curious about paint and that kind of thing, you can you can look it up. Uh, again, not a, not I'm not recommending them. I just kind of like I've been enjoying playing with them. So. I think the reason that I was attracted to the acrylic gouache is because they dry to a very matte finish and they're also opaque. So. Those are both, you know, properties that I appreciate when it comes to painting minis and they're, e you know, it makes them easier to photograph. That's why, like, I kind of prefer painting non-metallic metal, not because I'm great at it, but because it just looks better when you're primarily like a painter for painting's sake, not necessarily a player. Um, Another thing about the uh, gouaches is that they stay very fluid inside of the inside of the paintbrush. So when you get your thinning down and you're you're working back and forth, you're working quickly. You 
you don't have to rinse out you don't have to uh, load up the brush as much and I find it very useful uh, for freehanding as well okay so we're moving into a different phase here I actually painted the front of this um, and you know to go back to the problems that I have with filming I didn't I wasn't recording and the screen kept getting dark and I was like why is the screen getting dark because when you use the phone if it's on and you're recording it doesn't it took me a little bit of troubleshooting to figure that out uh, regardless I had to do the second side and I was about to like just get it all in a huff again because I just have so many problems recording and uh, I was like you know what let's power through let's do the other side so what I'm doing is I've switched to a, a very uh, fine tip brush now this is a uh, Blick master stroke number one I believe it's kind of like Blick's house Kalinsky the tip is a little weird on this brush like it doesn't come to a perfect point uh, sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't it seems to get a lot of grit in the tip honestly I don't know who's to blame here uh, it's fine enough it was it was about half the price of a uh, Windsor and Newton people have been talking about uh, Windsor and Newton's have been sort of declining in quality um, or their their quality is not necessarily as guaranteed anymore and I, I don't know if I've really uh, kind of felt that to be the case um, when I first started, I bought all good stuff. I bought all Windsor and Newton. I bought, you know, really nice airbrush out of the gate after I uh, started at my new job. And I had no idea how to use that equipment, so I just kind of thrashed everything. So to me, if you had given me a Walmart brush, uh, you know, I could tell the difference between a decent Kalinsky and a Walmart brush. But now, um, I've been using bigger and maybe rougher brushes for a larger percentage of my work simply because um, a lot of your base coating and a lot of your highlighting like uh, as I said I've been doing uh, Sergio Calvo techniques um, he's mostly about just laying down big big beefy opaque layers and you don't need a really pointy brush to do that kind of stuff. You don't need an expensive brush. You need a brush that's going to kind of hold its tip. So for me, I find that my older Kalinskis, which uh, as discussed, I was rough with, those work fine for that kind of work. So I don't need to really ruin the tips on a bunch of new brushes. And I just kind of lay down the, uh, the groundwork. So anyhow, uh, I'm going to discuss what I'm doing. I, I haven't really highlighted. I may have put down maybe one highlight with my skin mix. Um, and then I started just hitting this tentacle with these little rings. And they're not exactly... The problem with these, these easy to build guys is that they're a little soft when it comes to the details. But I, I, I think it looks okay. I got some of the rings in there. Um, it looks like I'm putting on some purple glazes. So this is the dioxazine purple and you can see just how dark a purple it is. It's almost, I'd say, like a violet, but um, anyhow. Okay, so it looks like I'm starting in on the boil. I've done about all the skin work I'm going to do on that particular tentacle. Um, and again, like, uh, you know, this video was meant to sort of cover the ground that I did on the other model, but you know, maybe I'm being dismissive. But I, I like I don't I don't feel that um, this this method is any better or worse than the other one. You can go with more highlights, you can go with less, you can glaze the skin. But I feel that uh, this is a pretty simple approach uh, as far as the tentacles go the other model also had like tubing and tentacles and that kind of thing and like if you're doing a face a face is slightly different but this particular flesh I kinda I just wanted to keep it real simple uh, mostly for expediency and also for repeatability because that's one of the things that if you start getting real if you get real precious and fancy with your mixes and then let's say you set your models down for six months at a time and you come back to them uh, you will have a very hard time remembering what exactly it was that you did. Uh, ask me how I know. So anyhow, uh, I'm, I'm starting to paint the boil. 
Uh, I went with uh, black here and I started using the yellow oxide. The yellow oxide is uh, kind of a would be a decent color for a non-metallic metal gold um, but I wanted to do like a pussy boil. I saw this guy on uh, Reddit who was doing you know I, I really liked his blister color. I was like man those blisters look real juicy so I was kind of trying to approximate it. I didn't necessarily ask what his recipe was. I feel that um, I'm kind of at the point where I need to start figuring these things out for myself. And of course, like, you know, there's always, you know, you can always crib from people's recipes and stuff, but uh, yeah. Um, about this particular point, um, I start like, I, I think I got to a decent place on the boil, but then I kind of like overcooked it and I started really getting up in my head about it. And then I really jack it up and you will probably see that. Um, and all I'm doing is I'm just going with progressively lighter mixes of the color. I may have worked in a little bit of burnt sienna or I don't know what part of the problem here. And this is kind of an overarching theme, which is that, oh, it's out of focus is that I don't really have like one of the reasons that I don't do more videos and one of the reasons that I haven't done more videos lately is that I was really I was disappointed with the quality of what I was putting out I was in the middle of a lot of different things um, a move a job change I mean there was so much going on in 2018 um, it was just you know it's a it's a year that I'm glad is behind me um, but in this particular clip which was for me last night I was having to reach over all crazy and that's partly my fault that's partly like I just couldn't you know I was trying to figure out where to put my arm for the camera I've got like this uh, kind of flexible arm that's it's relatively stiff but it's nice and bouncy so that's the bouncing that you see um, and the the camera itself I'm, I'm gonna try to get some paper so it can focus better the point the 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 point I'm trying to make is that it's not just a turnkey solution. Like if there was somebody who would just uh, set up a space for me to come over, sit down, uh, shoot the video, <laughs> and like I just get to, do, all I have to do is paint, that'd be tremendous. But like right now I'm like reaching over um, a bunch of stuff and I'm having to kind of thread the needle with the brush, it, even when I was doing that tentacle. And again, like I said, that's my own fault. It was kind of a, I was, I was in the mood to start filming again, so, it was just sort of a uh, let's get this up, let's get this going, and, and I'll just figure it out. And, um, you know, I think that we got to, I think that there is a little bit, at least you can see it, right? So there is some value of what is happening here. Uh, whereas before, like when it was at the other place, I was, at, I was, I'm, I've recently moved, I was living in another place in town and it was just it was not a good time i wasn't ready to get stuff out and i was using a different camera and i really didn't like the quality of the videos i was constantly drifting out of the frame and and you know that when that stuff happens like i i just get frustrated you know so it's not anybody's fault nobody's no you know i'm not nobody's uh when i go home from work they don't throw me into a, a cell and say you you have to paint or you're not going to eat dinner or you can't you know you can't can't leave until you start painting so I mean you know it's 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 uh it's something I want to do it's just something that I need to devote more time to I think is what I'm trying to say so here you can see there's a massive blender I had like a decent transition but I didn't like that uh, I the upper part of the boil was starting to get not not be dark enough so I was like eh, I'll just try to go back in there and maybe play with it because like I said the gouaches uh, I thought had a bit more uh, time to work although now that I'm thinking about it at the time I got I started using these several weeks ago and it was a lot colder then I live in a place uh, I live in the high desert and temperature swings can be fast so it was like about 40 degrees 50 degrees in my garage you know three or four weeks ago and now I think it's like 60 or 75 so it's it's kind of like it's kind of nice in the way that now I don't have to wait as long as far as painting goes but my painting I usually do a mix of all kinds of techniques so I'm right up on top of the mini 
uh, I'm blending, I'm taking paint away, I'm making adjustments, and uh, I can't really do that here. So this is a bit, uh, this is a bit different than how I'd actually paint it IRL, if you will, for the kids out there. So <clears throat> my painting would be a little faster and a little bit more freeform. So this is um, mostly because of the limitations of my working situation. And I'm going to try to, like I say, fix the angle. So I, I think I'm getting it back to a place where I can kind of live with it. Um, I don't know if I capture on, on film or camera, but I do remember last night I started, I worked in a couple uh, burnt sienna uh, mixes onto the skin. Oh, here I'm using the one of the other new colors I got, which is a phthalo green. So here's where I thought that I would have more time to work with it. Cause like three weeks ago when I was doing this kind of stuff, when I was just doing some, like I was putting down kind of light layers of the paint and then working it back, taking it away, feathering it out. That worked just fine when it was like 50 degrees in the garage. Now I think it's closer to like 70 and this stuff's drying quick, which actually I'm kind of pleased about to be honest with you, because one of the reasons that I like working with acrylics is like you have an idea in your head and you have uh, if technique is on your side and if the paint gods are favoring you, you can like kind of make it happen. You can shape it in an evening. Whereas if you work with other mediums uh, that are very slow drying, like oil paint, which I have done on this channel before, you sort of still need to give it time because oil paint doesn't care if it's like 90 degrees in the garage. It'll dry like maybe a day or two sooner uh, in the three weeks that it takes for it to cure, you know? So <laughs> it's a little different. That's actually not true when you work with light layers of oil. It'll probably take about 24 hours, but regardless, an hour or two isn't gonna change much when it comes to that. This stuff, on the other hand, I thought I had more time. So I'm kind of like, now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm looking at it, and now that I'm, you know, kind of uh, thinking about the environment, that makes more sense to me. So that's good. We're all here for my learning. That was nice. One of the things that I'm still sort of up in the air about as far as this guy goes is I'm like, how am I going to transition these tentacles into the armor? I don't know. It's one of those, it's one of those mysteries. So... Uh, there's not much left. Um, enjoy the rest of the video. Uh, and okay, so before I go, guys, uh, I'm gonna ask you if you haven't, you know, if you haven't commented yet, feel free to drop a comment. And also, like, I've, I'm mostly I'm doing this for me. I'll be straight up. Uh, but originally, I wanted to help people. But I like to share, you know. So. I'm thinking of like stuff that I want to paint, but this is just kind of what's on my desk. So if you have something that you think you'd might like to see painted, you should tell me, you should leave a comment, you should send an email, you should tell a friend, you should call your congressman, you should tell somebody, you know, people are listening, man. People are out there. All right, guys. See you in the next one.